All right. Okay. Is the recording? It's recording. Easy recording. All right. Make sure my phone's on silent. I need to look more fancy like that. You. He's been wearing those headphones at home. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. We've made it to Sunday, 9 a.m. It's the Healthy Docs Show brought to you by Absolute Healthcare. As you heard, the docs are in the studio to bring you the information you need, the information you desire, and of course, the information that matters most to you according to your health and wellness. That's the good docs, the healthy docs from Absolute Healthcare, 352 or 796-7171. And that'll get you through to Absolute Healthcare. I'm looking at their website right now, right in front of me, absolutehealthcare.org. And you've changed that over the past week here, I see, Docs. It looks pretty good. So we appreciate that. Thanks for having us. Yes, three locations to serve you, uh, Spring Hill, Port Ritchie, and Tampa. Now, we've talked about, over the past several uh, shows, we've discussed the uh, information in uh, wellness, uh, healthy ideas that matter most to you, of course. Right now, we're talking about drugs and why are drugs so expensive? You know, you go into the pharmacy, the doctor uh, prescribes a prescription. You go in and uh, be surprised at the price of that drug. So we're going to find out from the docs, Dr. Maholtra, Dr. Gupta, why American drug companies charge less overseas and why drugs are so expensive as we start with that first question. So, um the same company that will make a drug over here from American taxpayer dollars will sell it overseas if it gets approved there first and charges way less. And there are many, many reasons for that. The number one is that overseas countries negotiate prices as a country. So before a drug company can enter and say, hey, this is what we want to bring to the market, they want to make sure that the drug has, is worth it. The price to benefit ratio makes sense for populations. In the U.S., unfortunately, we do not have any such common negotiating power. Hopefully, we'll get it because uh, I think President Trump was trying to do it. Now President Biden's onto it. Hopefully, whosoever gets that ball rolling will make out very big for the population. Second is we have lawsuits over here. These lawsuits can increase the cost of reserves for legal costs in the future. And you'll see many class action lawsuits that will come up. And uh, also, you know, I think... Uh, they, they have, uh, I think, isn't it a high cost to hiring all these good-looking drug reps? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. And the meals to doctors. And in the past, there used to be an abuse of that, that there used to be doctors being taken to parties, to shows, to travels, etc. Thankfully, that has all stopped so that actually the consumer can get more benefit. But... Uh, even in the U.S., there are so many lobbies by the pharmaceutical company, the pharmaceutical industry. There is something called a pharmacy benefits manager who takes so much out of the uh, out of the pharmacy even. I have a friend who's a pharmacist, and I told him that I can give Crestor out of my office for less than $10 for three months, whereas Walmart is selling it for $600 to my patient. And this actually happened. It's a real story. Mm -hmm. The patient went to Walmart, paid $600-some for a three-month supply of Crestor, and he came back and said, Doctor, I bought it this one time, but I won't be able to afford it for the future. I said, how much do you pay? He said, I paid 600 and some dollars for this three month supply. I said, go back and see if we can return it. He had come straight from the pharmacy. The pharmacy said, no, we can't take it back. Right. I can understand that. But to charge and not tell the patient that they can look up something like good RX or something to decrease the cost. And then what happens is that these pharmacies are bound by certain laws that unless you tell them or ask them that, hey, tell me how can I buy this cheaper? They won't, they won't even offer it to you. Some of them are bound by contracts by their em employers that they can't offer to help the patient. Even though the pharmacist himself or herself as a professional wants to help the patient and feels terrible about charging all that money, they are bound contractually not to be able to help the patient with a lower cost. So multiple factors, the, the middlemen, the legal aspects, the non-negotiation of the, of the government increased the cost astronomically 
in the U.S. Let's take a, a step back real quick. Uh, American drugs and these companies charge less overseas. Is that the case with the other uh, countries that charge Americans less as well? Because I understand and what I heard is that most of our uh, pharmaceuticals are manufactured overseas, either from China, uh, maybe Canada now or whatever. But why is that? And do we, why aren't we manufacturing them all here in America? You know, just like most of our manufacturing has gone to China, the cost of manufacturing is what people are looking at. And if they can create the same standards of that are FDA approved overseas, they will get it done overseas as opposed to over here. And uh, I can understand that from a business standpoint. Right. But to come back and charge the Americans who actually funded the, the research, the, the, the development of the new drug, way more than you're going to charge overseas, right. seems unfair. It does. And this is such an important topic. That's why we're discussing it today on the Healthy Docs Show, brought to you by Absolute Healthcare. That's Dr. Mahaltra otherwise known as Dr. G, and of course, Dr. Gupta is gonna be weighing in here as well as we discuss drugs and why they're so expensive. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think about it as no different than any other, um, you know, person that's out there trying to make it as an entrepreneur in this, co in this country. Mm -hmm. um, many of the latest and greatest medications that are out there today are developed in America because of the ultimate goal that if they are able to get the medication into the market of the United States and to the world, that they will profit from it. Just as any entrepreneur that wants to create their own product and get it into the market could eventually make it on their own. And I certainly don't think that there's no place for these companies to make these medications and uh, you know make a profit from it. But it does come down to when these medicines become so unaffordable and they're still considered the standard of care when there's no alternative option, that's when it really becomes a frustrating process for a doctor to say, what are my other options? If it's something that just has to do with the convenience of a medication over another medicine that maybe you only have to take it once a day or once a month or twice a year versus the older medicines that you have to take two or three times every single day, then that convenience can be something that a patient can make the decision if they'd like to pay extra for the convenience versus taking it more often. And those are sort of the situations where it's easier to address with a person. But when it comes down to there's a medicines, like when we were talking last week about diabetes, that there's no alternative option or generic available, that's when it really gets you into this situation where you're stuck, you feel stuck. If you, if you look at the guidelines right now um, for many of the common diseases, the first line therapy for them will be medicines that are still brand name medications that have no generic alternative. And while some of them have become available in the market um, as a generic, um, some of them haven't. And a lot of diseases that we treat, we, we get into a situation where the patient will tell us that they can't afford the medication. And then that's when we, uh, we actually discussed, me and Dr. Malhotra were talking about we think this would be a great idea to talk about this um, for, for the show because it's something we deal with on a daily basis. And how we navigate through that comes down to how we treat every single person in our practice as an individual because there is no blanket approach. Just like when treating a disease itself, there's no blanket approach for a person. So it, it, it is difficult to do. And um, we, we've come up with multiple things that we've tried over time. Um, to help make these medications affordable, like Dr. Mahotra will, will talk about soon with having our own little pharmacy in our office for patients that can't afford certain medicines, uh, telling them different tricks of the trade, for example, that they can do to get medicines more affordably, programs that exist. So we're gonna get into some of these things um, for that topic today. And I know a half hour is not enough time to be able to cover it all, but we're going to try and do the best we can with the healthy docs talking about your prescription medication and the expense there with that. So speaking of generic drugs, now I know marketing is a big part of this because we're inundated by it on a daily basis. I mean, we're just constantly bombarded by these messages on TV that say, you got to take this drug because this is the best drug that's out there. This is the best drug for you. And this is the best drug for your disease or your case or whatever the case might be. But they're not doctors that are actually doing this. These are marketers and salespeople. So what's the difference there? I mean, should we listen to what we see on TV or do we need to, of course, listen to our doctor? Knowledge is always good to have. 
So as you get informed about newer options, it's great. But don't go with the preconceived idea that this is what I want. Because, you know, there are so many options available. There are so many side effects to these newer drugs, and some of them, these side effects have not even been discovered yet. Whereas there are some really time-tested medicines where the patent is no longer restricting the generics from being there, and the cost-benefit ratio is amazingly better. So there could be a difference of maybe 5 or 10% that the drug company is trying to highlight in a different way and uh, say this is the best out there, but they don't want you to know what the options are. Yeah. They don't tell you what the cost is. They will not tell you that every month this is going to cost you $5,000. So this is, uh, I think it is a, I think it's a sin. I don't have where, to agree with you. That's where I would put it. It's yeah. a sin to our country, our country's people, to not tell them that there are options available and there are wonderful options available that have that are one-tenth one the price, and the difference is just in small percentage points in terms of benefit. So uh, there is a lot there that I would like to change, but uh, by and large, it is, sometimes I feel this is a scam. I look at a drug company's advertise, uh, advertising out there, and I say, why can't you tell them that you are gonna cost them $50,000 every year? Right. But why can't you tell them that this this treatment is going to be half a million dollars? And I I talk to my cancer you know doctor patient the doctor friends mm -hmm. and ask them that how can this even be justified when the difference in lifespan is only maybe two months three months if that and if you discuss that with the patient the patients are so much more uh, you know they they have no idea right. the my cancer doctor himself is stuck he says. Gaurav, this is what I have to do by society guidelines. I said, I totally understand. You do what you have to do. But eventually, inform the patient. But there are so many other options that may not be this or that. And this is the difference. And many of my patients have got, come back and told me that, Doc, this is what they were trying to sell me. I just walked out of there. I said, man, no. I want just a healthy life like I am. This is end of care life. But what frustrates us even more is the daily care, as you are living with diabetes, as you're living with obesity, as you're living with COPD, that every monthly, a monthly inhaler cost could be six, seven hundred dollars. This is, who can afford this? Right. Just because you have hands in the pockets of an insurance company or the government itself, why are you uh, gouging? And that is my biggest uh, concern for Americans. There is a there is an inhaler that over here my wife was going to buy it for my father-in-law who mm -hmm. lives in India and take it for him. I said at least find out if it's available in India because it's a newer drug and the cost over here is $650 for that inhaler. And I wrote to my brother who's in India I said hey can you find out if this is available and he writes back yes and he tells me the price it is about $35. Wow. I said, what are you doing? So I wrote to my father-in-law and said, why don't you buy it there? Rather than us purchasing it here and bringing it over. But this is what, see the, the benefit to an American population of what they should see. Well, maybe you can charge a hundred bucks three times. Isn't that good enough for you? You know, a Tesla is sold for more in China than it is in America. An iPhone is sold more for more in India than it is in America. But why is this discrepancy, why is this entirely reversed in the pharmaceutical industry? And this is something that they don't teach you in school. When you have to go through so many years of education, you don't learn a single thing about this. Our textbooks write down what is the drug of choice. <laughs> in brackets, no pricings are written. So it is funny how Dr. Gupta came on and, you know, I was showing him how these things work. And he said, this is insane. And then he went on to do his own research. What do you find? Well, uh, just to, to, to mention, you know, I am a recent graduate from my medical education and training before I've uh, started working with Dr. Malhotra and his company that he's created. And it, it is a requirement from the government and medical associations when it comes to our training to have discussions um, a certain amount of times about the cost of medicines. And it wasn't that it was completely ignored. You know, I think overarching themes and broad subjects were discussed with regards to medication costs, uh, you know, the difference between generic and brand names. 
But when you get into an independent practice, and now I'm seeing patients on my own volition without um, sort of the um, environment of purely educational and scientific and going by the book, you start to see all the sort of fine and minute details that different insurance companies have even between each other um, on the same type of plan. You start to see that some people are getting medications covered by their insurance while others aren't or require additional um, uh, failures of previous medicines or other things such as um, you know they've did two or three pills before they'll, they'll approve uh, the next medicine. And those, those things alone was one of the things that excited me about reading up on this subject was because this is also a learning um, opportunity for me, myself, um, because this is also something that I have difficulty with navigating coming right out of education myself. And a lot of times I'll, I'll leave a patient's room, I'll say I'll be right back when there's issues with cost of medicines and I'll go and find Dr. Malhotra and I'll say, hey, you know, I'm in a situation where I, you know, I, the guideline recommendations are X, Y, and Z. The costs for this patient are gonna be exorbitant too much how would you navigate this? What, what's the next step moving forward? And it's been a great opportunity to learn here because uh, you know I'm in an environment where a lot of patients that have been seeing Dr. G have been seeing him for 20 years and they fully trust him and they know that he explains everything to them in detail and lets them know the facts. What is it truly benefiting you to pay more money? And if you have a mild disease, you may not need the latest and greatest medication that's meant for truly severe diseases that have failed, you know, some of these simpler medicines that are older, cheaper, and generic. So um, it's been, it's been quite, quite a discovery process, I, I would have to say. And there are so many times we're taking people off of their medicines because they don't even need them. They come with these long lists from, uh, you know, out of state or another local doctor right. or somewhere else. And we are reviewing stuff and we see that this is not right, this is not right, this is not needed. Let's look at that lab, et cetera. Let's stop this, see what will happen. And as we transform their entire whole battery of drugs, the patient is becoming healthier with less medicines. So I think very important for us is also to go through the entire stuff and say, and then talk to the patient about their finances. Is it, is it affordable? Yesterday I was talking to a patient just as he was leaving. I say, are there any financial difficulties with affording your medicines? He said, no doc, not at all, but I truly appreciate you asking. So it's just those small little things, little bit of uh, one little question might completely transform what your management will be. Because there are so many people who are choosing between their food, their travel, and their drugs. So I would much rather that we save on the drugs if they can and enjoy everything else. Because you're here really to have a great life, not just a medical life. You and shouldn't have to give up a meal for a pill. Yeah. Totally, totally. And there are so many times we have transformed the cost of drugs. Uh, there are some drugs that are not even available on the market and we found them for a price that even if they were available on the market, we found them a price 10 times less through us. Right. So I think it has taken that one little extra step that helps you out by helping, uh, for helping the patient. Well, before we go, we're going to go get into some specifics. Uh, one tip, uh, one drug in particular, a thyroid medication, and about we're going to talk about big pharma before we leave, if we can squeeze it all in. But in the meantime, I'm sure everyone is asking themselves right now, okay, so how can you save me money on my prescriptions? I'm sure there's not only generic prices, but there's other discounts and programs and clubs. Or, so how can you save me money on my prescriptions? So a couple of things. One of them about the big pharma company that you mentioned. We were looking into sort of examples of what some of the things that these drug companies do in order to benefit more and more and give less and less. And what we found as a prime example and something I've experienced myself in the past few years was um, the common thyroid medicine Synthroid. And that is one of the common medicines for a low thyroid disease, um, low hormone production disease. And Synthroid has been out there for many years and it works, it works as intended, uh, works great, it's easy to use, and it's easy to adjust. But when the generic became available, the way that they had been marketing their brand was that their brand name was better than the generic, in certain ways, not, not so blatant and, and black and white, but in ways that were subtle enough to convince a person that the, their trade name was better. 
And I had patients tell me that I will not take the generic of this medication in the past, that, that medication specifically. So we looked into it and they were sued over $40 million because of the way that they were branding their medication. So it's not that Synthroid itself, um, the medication um, was a bad discovery and that maybe the original intentions to make the medication was with bad intentions. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to money, greed can happen. And if you can make more money by slandering um, FDA approved generic scientifically equivalent medications, then you should be punished. You know, there should be checks and balances for, for everything. And um, this is not just with their brand and their, their medication, but it was an example and something that we do have to talk to patients about when they say, you know, is the brand name better than the generic? And generally speaking, there have been very few instances where a generic has been recalled and at no greater um, rate or percentage than um, trade name, brand name drugs that have been recalled in the past. So um, when it comes now to the second question that you were mentioning, um, yeah, uh, so we, we generally have a couple of options for patients with discounts. One is we can say, you know, you can use a good RX coupon. You can call different pharmacies and compare costs or go onto the internet and, and look it up. There's usually websites that will show by the pharmacy or convenience store that you go to to pick up your medicines and will show you the difference in price for the same medicine that you type in. The other things that you can do are going to discount types of clubs, BJ's and um, Costco. Costco, Sam's Club Sam's locally. Club. Yep, and they'll, they generally will have options for 90 day or six month supplies of medications at a uh, much better cost to benefit ratio than um, some of the pharmacies will sell them for. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if even a few dollars out of a patient's pocket is going to be what tips them over from being able to afford food and other life um, needing things, then we will invest in the patient and give them the medicine free of charge. So yeah, out of our pharmacy, because the office. we we have we have a little pharmacy that carries common medicines. You know, we don't have a huge you know supply of brand name medicines, but we have what's you know the the bread and butter of what are most commonly used. And we believe just like with investing in a business and you know, uh, like different companies will do to, to get patients sort of to come to their, or people to buy their product. We, we invest in our own company. So we, that's why we offer the gyms and why, that's why we offer alternative to medication treatments for pains and things like that. We offer these things that was out of the cost of the company as a reinvestment. So if someone can't afford it, we, we truly will find out what their limiting factors are, but we won't let them go without treatment if it's something that they really want um, to, to move forward and, and be, to get done uh, because we see it all the time. Then there are some drug company programs for reduce the drug cost. You know, if your income qualifies, sometimes you may not qualify for Medicaid, which is low income standards of the state, but you might qualify for a drug company program. Unfortunately, that is only for the brand name drugs, but some of the drugs that have even gone generic but still have a brand available, you might be able to get them through the company for less or for free. So those kinds of things. Sometimes the pharmacist himself will volunteer to say, I have a coupon for this drug. Let me just apply that to you, to your purchase. So all these kinds of things actually help. As professionals, we can all help if we care. So that caring pharmacy, our, our office, our own little pharmacy, there are combinations of the, of the discount pharmacies. I think everything, a person should be aware of his options. Mm -hmm. Because the worst thing happens when you go to the first pharmacy that you've been going through or you go to the, the, the grocery store that you've been going to, go to the pharmacy and pay that $600 like one of my patients did and come out feeling ripped off is what you should never feel. Well, we've got so much to cover still and we've already covered a whole lot with the last three minutes of the show already. Time goes by so fast, but we're learning so much from Absolute Healthcare, joining you every Sunday at 9 a.m. right here on this station, same time every Sunday. Dr. Maholtra, Dr. Gupta, once again, sharing the information that means most to you. So within the last three minutes, we'll have you end with what you wanna end with, but real quick before we do that, do pharmacies still do compounding? You see in like old movies and shows in the past where they would just mix the medicine right there. I mean, do they still do that? Yes, they still offer compounding okay. medications. Um, 
generally they do cost more money than okay. um, the single agent because the benefit of a compound is so that I can maybe take one tablet instead of three different tablets and still get the same benefit. Now, for the most part, when it comes to, like I was already mentioning, convenience versus what sort of effort you're willing to put in that's free of charge, for example, then yes, if you'd like to pay the extra cost to have a compound medicine, um, if it would make your life more convenient and you can be on the go more often without having to remember stuff, sure, pay for it. But if it's something that it's just too much extra money to in your budget, then let us know. Uh, one of the things that patients sometimes do that we're also guilty of not sometimes asking about finances. I've done that before mm -hmm. where I didn't even ask. Yeah. And you know, you reflect on how you treat patients yourself. And and they won't tell you either, you know, I'm having difficulty with pain. So a message I would have to the patients as well as even to myself is to talk about the financial part of it. Talk about, can you afford the medicine? Let us know. We should be asking you as well. Um, I, you know, we try to be better every single day. We try to learn about these topics and different things we can do to help people. But if we didn't bring it up, talk to us about it. Let us know, hey, this is a difficulty in my, you know, my budget. Uh, is there another option? Is there something I can do differently to get the same benefit? And we'll go through it with you. I'll spend whatever amount of time is necessary because we at our practice, we don't get paid by the number of people we see. We get paid by making people healthy. So I'll take that time and we'll come to a, a reasonable conclusion. And it, it sometimes sacrifices have to be made, but it's made together where we're both aware of that situation and trying to get each other to be happy. That's what we want the patient to be, is, is feel, feeling happy, feeling like they're being treated truly and cared for, like Dr. G was already mentioning. So Dr. Mahalter, last words? It's your money and you must care that how you spend it and what value you get out of it. And if you come to us, we will try our best to professionally assist you in multiple ways. Don't give up quality of life just because your medications are too expensive. Make an appointment with the Absolute Healthcare team and ask them all those questions there in the office. They'll take the time with you. That's what they do as healthy docs in our community. Three locations to serve you, Spring Hill, Port Ritchie, and of course, Tampa. They're standing by to take your appointment. Call now, 352-251-0000. Check them out online, absolutehealthcare.org. And tune in next week. We'll be back here, same time, same station, for the Healthy Docs the show brought to you by Absolute Healthcare. If you do have a topic that you'd like the docs to discuss, please contact their office and pass that along so we can share it with you. God bless you. Thank you so much, doctors. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank take you. care. Awesome. That was, that was good. Sweet. Man, it's so much though. It goes so fast. It does. Especially um, like when it really... When you said it's three minutes left, I said I can't I know. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this. Because these, these are issues that I have personally been dealing with emotional issues. every day. Yeah. Yeah, you say, man, just going be? through the diabetes talk last week when I was doing the research, it, it was just my my own mother and my go my girlfriend were sitting on the couch when I was doing some reading. Yeah, and they were like, "Why do you look upset?" They 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 told me that. They said, "Why do you look frustrated right now?" Because I was like, "This is this is insane." Yes, there aren't even insane. anything affordable. It is insane. Yes, see the highest costs come from pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. and hospitals. Yeah, you're paying for all that marketing and sales and yes. Yeah. And all these little gimmicks they give you, you know, with the name brand pens and pads and I mean just it's crazy. Thankfully but, most of that has come to an end. Oh good. Yeah. Good. Yes. They're not even like allowed to give pens or anything or like that. Oh really? Wow. Correct. No pens anymore. Uh, they did uh, one of them recently gave us a uh, a notepad. Oh really? Uh the the nasal spray. Okay. It came with a uh, what are those little uh, notepads called like a post-it note yeah, kind of okay. thing. Um, I was like, I've been using it too. They're okay. It's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Well, thank you, John. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, that's something that uh, we can almost expand on in the future. So, um, Dr. G, yeah. you're going to be gone for two weeks for vacation. 